In this session of DesignWorks TV, we're going to be working on an impeller. In this case, it's a closed one. So the first thing we need to do is create an alignment in DesignWorks. So on the DesignWorks toolbar, we're going to go up here and select the alignment tool. We actually have two types. We have an express and advanced. We're going to use advanced. We're going to first select the base plane. This can be done by three points or it can be done by multiples. So we selected the base plane. We're now going to define a direction. Again, this can be done by points, circles, edges, or spheres. We defined an X across the part. Now we're going to define a Y. And then now, in this case, the origin. On this part, the hub of this has actually uh, been ground. So we're going to define this hub as the center of our part. We're going to use the circle center. He's going to take three points around the peripheral. You notice in design works can be stored to the front, right, or top. This is design works 10 for SolidWorks 10. Notice this is also stored in the feature tree. That way if you lose power or actually have to do another part, you don't have to realign it. Let's go ahead and save this. on our desktop. So the first thing we're going to do is pick the front plane and start a new sketch. Yeah. For viewing purposes, notice in DesignWorks we have a four construction. We're going to use the arm to actually create a circle so we can view the part. Now, we want to find out what this profile is doing. We're going to utilize a, plane called, a tool called Lock Plane. In this case, we're not going to create any profiles. This tool allows you to create splines, lines, or points. We're going to actually take the arm and move it back and forth to grab the profile shape. So again, all you're doing is rubbing the probe against the part. A nice feature of DesignWorks is you can back up, overlap, stop, and start. What we're going to do is actually build this as a fully constrained profile. Then we'll go ahead and for you SolidWorks users, we'll actually just keep a closed profile and we'll revolve it. But again, this tool is great for capturing data that you want to make fully parametric. Or for freeform shapes, you actually can drag this and get a freeform surface. When the probe crosses that plane, it puts points or splines at that cross section. So now you can see as we rotated it, we have a nice cross section there. What we're going to do is make fully parametric models. This is just one technique. As a solid modeling user, there are different techniques. You actually could connect the points. Or you could simply drop data out there. And you're going to notice he's going to constrain this. Notice how they're horizontal and vertical. And he can lock that to that. In this case, we know the bore is not uh, on a taper. We knew it was straight. So we capture the data, utilize SOLIDWORKS tools to actually build a profile. Now notice here, this is more of a freeform shape. We could have used DesignWorks and captured that spline tur curve, but we thought it might be easier to constrain it. This is one of the nice things about a feature-based reverse engineering product that you can make adjustments and changes. So now that he has all his geometry constrained, he's going to go ahead and trim it. Notice how you can interactively use DesignWorks and SolidWorks simultaneously. DesignWorks tool is floating. You actually can dock it and put it where you want. In this case, we have it in the middle of the screen for easy use. Notice he now actually took the profile and used the SolidWorks tool to revolve it. So you can see in this case, you can use DesignWorks in conjunction with SOLIDWORKS and build a model. Now that we have that profile, we're going to go ahead and work on starting to design the bottom of the vein. There's a flat surface as well as a concave surface. 
So we went ahead and we're going to take DesignWorks and use that mock plane tool in a very simplified format first. Remember how we built the profile? We're now kind of repeating that. We made a plane. We're moving the probe back and forth across it. When the probe pierces the plane, it intersects it and gives us data. In this case, we're going to use points, but we could have splines, and they actually are filtered. This is one of the nice things about DesignWorks. You can back up and overlap. Now that we have our profile, again, we could have used the curve tool, but we're going to go ahead and actually make this fully parametric. We're going to utilize the axis of the part to help build this bottom. In this case, if this is a freeform curve, we capture the data and we're going to use the curve tool in SOLIDWORKS to go ahead and complete it. The bottom of this is a cast, so it is very difficult to try to get that. It's kind of uh, bumpy. But you can say even if there were indents and imperfections in there, you can use SOLIDWORKS to pull this out. Now he's going to trim up his profile, revolve it, and we have, we'll have the bottom shape of this. So we've got to revolve. Notice we have our base profile now. Now we're going to go ahead and determine where are these blades sitting in here. So we're first going to go ahead and be in a 3D sketch, and we're actually going to just um, determine where they're at in space. So notice he's going to take the probe and actually digitize in 3D space where this vein is at. In this case, there is an undercut area we can't quite reach with this current probe. DesignWorks does support bent probes. In this case, we would need more of a bent probe to get way back in this area. So we're going to be doing up to the undercut area. That's how he captured a shape. Again, that was using DesignWorks in a 3D sketch, capturing the blade. And that's why we're using a point probe in this case. You could use ball probes, um, and DesignWorks does full compensation. But again, in this case with this blade, we want that very little edge. We're going to utilize a very, very powerful tool in SOLIDWORKS that allows us to actually fill a surface. Now, we captured the 3D profile, and we can fill it. Now, for time's sake, we're not going to go in and actually uh, verify it, but we would use the lock plane tool and put some planes through there and actually go back and forth up and down it. And we've already done this. And when we did, it was totally transparent. In cases where you need to pull the profile, you can use the 3D sketch in conjunction with other constraining data to manipulate that surface. But again, in this case, this freeform shape fell right inside that boundary. Now he's going to rotate a plane of blade off. We actually extended it past it because we want to trim it to the center hub. Notice this is DesignWorks 10 with SOLIDWORKS 10. So for you SOLIDWORKS users, this new plane tool looks a little different. So now we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to move the camera. You're going to see, be able to see down inside here more. He's getting this vein, so you can actually use it to trim as well. What that air factor was telling you is SOLIDWORKS will not allow you to create a point on top of a point. But with a digitizer device, it's possible to try to stack it. So just warned him that, hey, I can't create a point on top of a point. So all the audible feedback of, of SOLIDWORKS does filter back through DesignWorks, which is a gold partner for SOLIDWORKS. So 
So what he's doing now is he's actually, that's the edge of that blade. He's using the SOLIDWORKS curve tool to actually disconnect it. Mm -hmm. You could do this automatically, but because this is so thin, we opted to actually take some points and then connect it. If it was thicker, we would allow DesignWorks to actually make that curve. So what he's going to do is actually make this profile. And in this case, you'll notice we're doing this more as a solid. You can do it as a solid or a surface. Some people prefer the solid modeling um, method. Others may prefer the surface. Again, for design principles, notice how we can constrain the geometry. In this case, this part uh, has been in use for a while. It may be war. The nice thing about feature-based reverse engineering is this can be dimensioned and can be modified and changed. We're assuming we're uh, reverse engineering this as is, but again, for worn parts, you have the ability to go modify and make changes. This had a little bit more surface. Okay. So now he has it all trimmed up. If you're working on parts like this, we suggest that you would take the advanced surface modeling training from your reseller. In cases of using SOLIDWORKS with DesignWorks, it's really truthfully 90% knowing the SOLIDWORKS products. It's 10% really, you know, using DesignWorks. But again, in this case, if you can see how fast we can capture this data, but if you weren't educated in how to use the surface tools, it'd be very difficult to go trim, extend, knit, and do things like that. So what he's going to do now, he's actually just going to thicken this. We're assuming that this has a constant thickness. It may not. Again, with the restricted probe we have, um, we can't really reach back in there. In the case this wasn't a constant thickness, we repeat the process like we did on this face, on the back face, and then we knit the two bodies together. So it can be done either way. But again, we were assuming this is a constant thickness. He used the SOLIDWORKS tool to actually rotate it and get the rest of the veins. Pretty impressive. In a little over 12 minutes, we've almost built 90% of this part. You can say, is believing. We've got one little area. It's got some cutouts around the outside profile. We're going to go ahead and build these. Again, our probe won't reach all the way in there. This is more to show you the concept of how to do this cutout. I'm going to move the camera for a second. Okay, so what he did, he, he wanted to offset a plane to a point. That's a nice feature of DesignWorks because it ensures that the plane is parallel. We could have built one, but because of um, tolerances and things and parts as well as devices, we wanted to ensure that that was exactly parallel to the plane. So we used DesignWorks feature, offset plane to a digitized point. Now he's going ahead, he's going to capture this profile underneath the part. He's just simply going to go ahead and uh, once he captures it, he'll extrude it. Okay. Again, he's going to utilize DesignWorks and offset that front plane to a digitized point. Because he can't reach it, He's just going to hold something up against it and digitize to the point. Now he knows where the cutout begins.
Now we'll go ahead and start preparing to do this cutout. He's actually going to take some data in here to determine you know, where he's working. But again, in this case, our probe doesn't quite fit the whole area. Again, we're just showing a proof of concept. He's reaching back in there and he's touching the hub. There's a hub in the back and he's taking data on it. So you can see how he's taking data internally to the point. What you may want to do is have a bent probe and actually drag that back through there to get that profile. Now that he has a concept of where that cutout is, he's going to connect it using SOLIDWORKS tools. Again, with DesignWorks, you could have dragged that, but it is a rough cast. So it's nice to actually just collect the points and figure out the profile. You could actually even fit an arc to it. So if you really thought that that may be a large arc, you could use SOLIDWORKS and tell it to create a curve through three, four, five points and get that full cutout. We're going to create just a closed profile. And let's do a cut. So this is how nice it has the solid works with design works has the contour select. He can pick where he wants to cut to, push the button, and it cuts out the slot. There you have the completed slot. He's going to rotate that about the center axis, because we're, again, we're assuming they're all the same. And there, under 20 minutes, we've built a closed impeller. Tune in next week for another part where we've taken up on DesignWorks TV. We appreciate your time. Thanks.